Hey guys, welcome back to the Life of a Makeup Artist podcast. Today we have a very anticipated episode. We are talking agencies with no other than celebrity makeup artist Joseph Carrillo. Joseph. Ah, the crowd goes wild. <laughs> Joseph, how are you? Hello. I'm amazing. Now, Joseph and I have known each other for years. You are such a talent, such inspiration. And, you know, today we are taking the lid off and we are spilling the tea because you have always been so forthcoming with information, yeah. with, with just inspiration, honestly. And um, I remember our conversation one time in the back of a car and you were like, you need to start asking for cabs. And this was like when I never, it never even crossed my brain. Yeah. And I, all those things like remain with me. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about this episode because I know you give it to us straight. That's You're going right. to give it to us straight. That's what's up. <laughs> okay. So Joseph, do you mind introducing yourself okay. to our new friends? Um, hello, my name is Joseph Carrillo and I am a celebrity editorial, high fashion, TV, film, everything makeup artist you mm -hmm. could think of. I don't like saying professional makeup artist uh -huh. because um, Picasso and Van Gogh didn't call themselves professional painters. Right. They were just painters. So right. I'm just a makeup, I am a working makeup Make artist. I love that. Yeah. What about the celebrity term? I mean, you actually do celebrities. You know, There's I, always I like do, a back and forth, I not you, but like. I feel like, you know, the word makeup artist is, it's, it's just that in itself, right. you know. We are makeup artists. Right. And so saying celebrity is just kind of like defining what that is. So right. I just like to say I'm a working makeup artist. Right. Um, but my name is attached to celebrities. And before I was a high fashion makeup artist right. just because I was working with Tom Brown, Carolina Herrera, Zach right. Posen, and then doing right. Vogue's right. whatever. All the things. Yeah. Right. So. so can you share with us, because we are talking about agencies, mm -hmm. um, some of the agencies that you've been part of, and we'll get into it more later. Yeah. So I was with solo artists. I was with Kate Ryan. I was oh, with... Oh, I remember Kate Ryan. Remember Kate Ryan? Yeah. I was with um, solo artist Kate Ryan, Atelier. Um, I did a lot of stuff off roster at Wall Group and Streeters. Mm -hmm. And then I was... I am now at Exclusive. Amazing. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Now, before we get into the agency conversation, I kind of want to paint the picture, right? Mm -hmm. Like you said, Picasso. Um, you have been a staple in fashion entertainment. You've done red carpet. Mm -hmm. You Vogue contributor. Mm -hmm. You have done, you know, Uma Thurman, Priyanka Chopra, and you've worked on, you know, Lizzo, teams. Lizzo, Lizzo. Mm -hmm. Like, listen, give me all the things. Tell me where I miss out. Yeah. But and you've also been, you know, a staple backstage. You've worked on teams like Pat McGrath. It's yep. just like the upper echelon of fashion. Yes, week. You can't get higher than everything, that. Everything, mother. Um, and uh, you know, but how did you even get your start in the industry? You know, if I'm being really honest with myself, I feel like I didn't have a plan, mm -hmm. and that's how it worked for me. Right. I kept wanting to evolve and find my way. I wasn't looking to be. I don't want to be Pat McGrath. I want right. to be me, but I did want to know what Pat was up to and and um, Val Garland and, mm -hmm. and everybody else. And right. also like um, what influencers were doing mm -hmm. at the time. And, and I just always wanted to grow and know. And I felt like when I wanted to get to a certain place and there was like an obstacle or something kind of stopping me, I didn't want to see that as something stopping me. I wanted to find it as a new path to get to it. Right. And so I always followed it. So when I first started, I was doing a lot of I guess commercial, mm -hmm. and then it switched to, I, I really focused on one thing solidly for a year to mm -hmm. make sure that I liked it and I was good at it. Right. And so now I can say that I've done all of these things because I want to do so. It wasn't like I had a plan, like I want to be Pat. Right. Th that's it, that's my goal. Yeah, like, I want to be wanna high be fashion. Or, yeah. I want to be high fashion. Yeah. I thought I did. Right. And as it was evolving and growing, I feel like I just wanted to be working. Right. And I wasn't necessarily a paper chaser, but I was definitely um, focused on being fulfilled mm -hmm. every year that I wanted to do it. Like I, one year I just focused on bridal mm -hmm. and I had so many brides and I made so much money off right. of it. And then I was like, that was fun, but you know what? I don't know if I, it was fulfilling. Right. And it just changes. We right. change, we evolve, we grow right. and you know, you're doing this. Right. You know, it's just all, right. there's no real path. And if you set out a path, I feel like you set up yourself up for failure. Right. Because you feel like once that's not happening and the path is going yeah. like this, you're like, a broken all. dream isn't a broken life. Right. You know, but people feel like that because right. it's like, oh no, I have to move back to 
um, El Paso, Texas. That's where I'm from. Right. I have to move back to El Paso, Texas because I didn't make it. Right. It's like, no, I have now all of this knowledge. Right. And I could really be somebody bigger and better and different than I ever knew. Right. So when did you move to New York? How 12 long? years ago. <gasps> wow. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I'm a New Yorker. You're a New Yorker, yeah. I'm nine years. So I'm not a New Yorker. Okay. Almost. I'm it's still coming. A Trini it's in New coming. York. <laughs> it's coming. I love that. Okay, so I put a poll out on okay. our Instagram, okay. um, and our community came through deep with the questions, you know, from fellow makeup artists, yeah. friends at the life of a makeup artist. If you're not following, don't forget to connect. But we have a lot of questions, and I'm gonna go through them. These are directly from our community, our okay. makeup artist friends. Okay. So the first one is, you know, how do you even get noticed to be signed? <laughs> okay. I feel like the real answer there uh -huh. is I put my brain as an agent, mm -hmm. right? You get noticed to be signed when you have the aesthetic that they are looking for. Right. And so let's say that you do all these test shoots and it's very like artsy and graphic liner and water paint, like really cool. That's not necessarily what an agent is looking for. They're right. looking for clean, timeless, um, someone that they can see that they have evolved and grown. Mm -hmm. So I feel like your book and your aesthetic is what's going to, they're going to know if they want to meet you. Right. Just looking at your book. They're right. going to be like, you know what? Their taste level, it can be there. It's just not there yet. Right. I know you've worked with all of right. these people. Right. It's just your taste level isn't there yet. Right. So, that so do you think, though, it's like a matter of finding a fine balance? Because, you know, sometimes you don't want to just be like, well, I have to do clean in order to get booked. But then you feel stifled, your creativity. You're like, I'm tired of doing glossy skin and a red lip. Like, so do you think it's a matter of, OK, still do your artsy stuff, mm -hmm. but then still balance it with that clean, elevated looks? I think, you know, it's definitely balance your artsy stuff and all of that. But however, what you want to push is what you... Um, how they can make money off of you. Right. So I feel like there are a lot of really amazing artists that are like at streeters or, or streeters, I will say specifically, they're more artsy. They are, and and that's what they get booked on and right. for. Like right. that's the aesthetic that they look for. Right. At that type of agency. Right. So that doesn't necessarily mean that they are doing that on, they do a lot of editorial. So mm. maybe they're not doing campaigns for Maybelline. Right. You know what I mean? So right. it just depends where you see yourself right. as well. So frame it as one, where do I see myself? Where and do you then, see yourself? And then and when you're going to an agency, know that the aesthetic, your aesthetic should be something similar to right. theirs. Right. And then our next question is, what do you think is the most important aspect when they are looking to sign an artist? So one obviously is your book, but is there anything else you think that they're looking for that will be like, okay, I think this is someone we need to sign. Now, is this when they've seen you in person or no? Have, have I seen you yet? <laughs> that's a good, that's a good caveat. I don't know. They haven't, they just, maybe they've set up a meeting. So you I, know what? They have a meeting. Okay. They had so the meeting. Let's start first. You reach out to me. I look at your book and I'm like, listen, she's a talented makeup artist. Mm -hmm. Can I grow with her? Can right. she grow with me? That's what I'm going to look at. Then I'm going to see your aesthetic, and I'm going to be like, okay, she can do it all. Right. She can do black, white, Puerto Rican, Chinese, right. anything great. Right. This is a developed artist. Mm -hmm. Now, that's what they're going to look for in your book. So then when they meet you, I think they're basically going to be like, are you a dick? Do you have an <laughs> ego? Do you have a bad attitude? Right. It's just the right. way it is. Right. Because I can't work with you if you are hard to work with. Right. I need you. you so who you are is you, the most important. Of course, really. in person. If yeah. they meet you and you're just like, you know, really talky and nervous and bajiggity and obviously you're going to be. Bajiggity. That's a new one I never heard. <laughs> um, I like if, that. If you are going to cave, even when you just meet them. Right. How are you going to be like that in front of, let's say, a celebrity? Yeah. You're going to be nervous? Right. Yeah. So it's more so that type of um, meeting you is probably the most important thing. They get to see you. Right. They get to see your aesthetic, your mm -hmm. style. If you smell bad. Right. If you're nervous. If right. You, you know. Right. That's that's a good one. So now this is the next question. Mm -hmm. Now this one is um, well, actually this one is from me and what I've learned from my oh. mentor. Okay. What questions should you be asking mm -hmm. when you are setting up an agency meeting? Because obviously it's like I want 
to be on your team. I want to be on your agency. Yeah. But like also, I have to ask the important question. Sure. So what do you think are some of those important I questions? I think those important questions are definitely asked in person and not on email. Okay. Never oh, ask. The, is it like, oh, is over the phone an option? Is it still the same? Over the phone, if the agent doesn't want to meet you, yes, because you can hear the tone and all of that, and it's a little like more a Zoom personal. Or yeah. yeah, because you know, if you read a text, it can right. seem like something else, right? In, in the mood that you're feeling, right? And it might not be what those words meant, right? So, in person, um, asking, sorry, asking the agent or asking the so. Basically, what questions should you be asking the agent? Because you want to be part of this agency, right. but you also have to know what questions to sure. ask. Sure. So I would say, you know, what's your outreach look like? Yeah. Who? How do you do it? Right. Who is it? An email blast? Is it like what does that look like? Another question I think um, is, do you do teams in house? Right. Like, oh, hey, um, Jalisa does um, hair, makeup. There's this other photographer. Let's link you guys. Let's just keep everything in the agency. Mm -hmm. Or is it just kind of, right? you know, I, do they set up teams to do stuff like that right. as well? Right. Interesting. So this question actually comes from one of our friends. And they say, now let's talk money. There is no one size that fits all, obviously. Mm -hmm. And, like, there are... Industry standards we know, and like sure. obviously, typically they charge the client a fee, and then fee comes out of your mm -hmm. your rate. Mm -hmm. Now, can you speak on typical agency commissions? So I feel like fifteen to twenty percent is is what's going on. Yes, industry I feel standard. like you can also industry standard. Um, I feel like if your book is strong enough, you can, especially because COVID just happened. Right, like you know, you were able to manage your own shit for a while. I feel like y you know how much money you make mm -hmm. and what you can bring to them. So I feel like, um, I forgot the question. So the question <laughs> was basically like, um, with agency commissions and stuff, mm -hmm. just speaking on like general, right. like so when you, but when you go and you meet with them, you could be like, Hey, listen, I do have this. Let's say that I have, um, I work with Maybelline all the time. Right. And I'm like, you know what? This is mine. So you can take your agency fee, but I would prefer if you took 10% off of of mine right. or not do it off of this booking. Right. And some agents are cool with that because you're bringing in that type of money. Right. Do you think that it's, um, with the, all the agencies that you've been with, do you think they're always open to negotiate that? Because a lot of people are like, well, I want to be signed, but I don't want them to take I this percentage. Like agents that have been agenting for a while, yes. The newer ones will say no because they want their commission. Right. So right. I feel like a junior agent that just elevated, they're going to be like, well, well. Right. You know, because they want that. Right. So what has been some of like the biggest lessons that you have learned because you've been at, you know, quite a few different agencies mm -hmm. and you know that it's not about the agency. Sometimes it's most obviously about the agent yeah. and like taking your career into your own hands. So like what has been like maybe top one to three lessons that you've learned throughout your career being signed to different agencies? Because they all have a different vibe. Um, you know, to be really, really honest, I feel like the number one thing that you should know that I learned that I want people to know is that when you go into an agency, they aren't your boss. They are not your boss. You are your boss. You're bringing them your money and you're splitting your money with someone. So you have to know, bitch, I do like you and I will give you this commission because you will hook me up. Right. And that's what this is about. It's a bond. It's a partnership. You right. Know? And when agents, I had an agent that in the beginning of my career that didn't talk down to me, but really treated me like if they were doing me a favor mm. and I didn't know what I didn't know and I didn't know any better. Um, and after that agent had left the agency and I was working with a different agent, that agent treated me like she was working for me. Right. And ever since then, I changed my mentality to be like, they do work for me, right. not in a way like they work for me like that, but right, right, right. essentially right. they do. Right. They have to ask all of the questions. I like to sit in the aisle. I like, right. I have a lot of things that I like. They have to do that. So they right. work for me. However, I treat them with lots of respect and what have you, but they work for me. Right. Just like 
th they're getting money off of me. Right. And that that's it. Your agent isn't your boss. Your agent is your partner. Right. Your agent is your business partner. Right. I love that. So I'm curious um, as to, you know, you've been with obviously different agencies. When do you know or when do you realize that this agency isn't for me? Like, are you, you start having that feeling like, I don't feel like this is working. Maybe I have a conversation, mm -hmm. but like, what's that like transition phase where you're like, all right, I think it's time for me to move on because it's a difficult decision, right? Like you spend time with this agent, you spend time with this agency, you've probably gotten a few clients or whatever. Like how does, what does that look like? You know, when you start feeling stuck, you are leave. You get in your head and you're just kind of like, no, well, you know, it's going to work out. I just need to give it time. But you've given it time. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't evolved and you are stuck, it's because you are. So now you have to change. But what do you think that time looks like? Six months, a year? Um, if, you're, if you've been, okay, you can't, you'll know that with your agent. Mm -hmm. If your agent is just kind of like beating you down or you're just very nervous with them or whatever, mm -hmm leave because then you're not compatible right but at an agency if you've been there for two years and you're just working with like the same clients let's pretend something like a commercial like a uh, hollister abercrombie uh, new york and co right hollister abercrombie new york and co and that's all you're fucking doing right it's like did you do this to make consistent money right because bitch you can go to the makeup counter right or did you do this to be an artist? Right. So if you only have these three clients and you're like, I'm killing it. I'm making this money and that's what's up. Then you're not stuck. That's what you want to do. Right. That's what you chose. But if you are evolving and you're like, oh, no, it's because I want to fucking go to celebrities. I want to do magazines. I want to. But choose one. You Don't be like, I want to do magazines. I want to do this. I wanna... You can do it all, but you can't have it all at the same time. Right. And that's where you spoke about like choosing a year to. Yeah, really I. You can even do it for six months, but truly dedicate your time to said. Right. Uh, passion. You right. know, like I'm gonna work on brides because it's bridal season from whatever, whatever. I'm really gonna push hard. So some things are gonna fall by the wayside in the other thing, but then you could be like, all right, now I know I need a bridal contract that does this, 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 because you don't know what you don't know. Right. You never really jumped in, and so going back to. Being stuck in, it's just, you know, you always have to know. I think the best thing, the, the best advice I can give all of us and myself would mm -hmm. be, you know, you can't really, if you make a goal, once you get it, you're unsatisfied. Right. So you have to keep pushing and evolving and just know that, you know, you should do everything and try to be happy while doing it. And then you always will be. Right. You're not stuck. Right. You know, because there's a point when you get to an agency and you feel like they're just kind of breaking you down. Mm -hmm. And you're just kind of like, what's going what on I do? here? <laughs> right. You know, like w w we're partners and right. it's over. Yeah. You know, I don't know if that was. No, that was perfect. That was just kind of a. That was perfect. All rounded up. No, that was perfect. Our next question from our uh, community use. And this is a direct quote. Ooh. I have been signed with Wilhelmina Ford Ooh. and now Directions. How the F. Are artists getting PR? How the F are artists getting PR? Basically, okay. she's been with all these different agencies. Yeah. Ain't shit happening. And she wants to know how she's getting PR because her inbox is dry. Okay. So I'm going to say to whoever's inbox that was, how does she get PR? Well, bitch, I'm going to tell you how <laughs> I get PR. <laughs> what I do is I find the editors. Uh-huh. The beauty, beauty editors, editors mm -hmm. writers, contributors, and I pitch to them. Mm -hmm. That's all. Agencies don't necessarily do PR for you anymore. Right. It's it's not where they are so exclusive that you have to have a contract with them and only them, and you can't be like taking other jobs. It's it's just that's just over. Right. You know. And so if you want to make it happen, person, mm -hmm. go for it. Right. Reach out. What do they right. gonna say? No. Right. Find someone else. Right. Find someone that's a BuzzFeed. Find someone that's smaller. That right. Marie Claire, a junior agent. Right. And then you'll work your way through it. But if you are so reliant on an agent to get you that, then you already have the wrong idea right. of what this business is like. Right. Because this business is us evolving and hustling and growing 
and wanting to be a part of it. And if you just want to sit back for shit to happen to you, you're already not at the right uh, frame of mind. Right. And what about product PR? Mm -hmm. Product PR is, it also depends on how you're using it on your feed. Mm -hmm. Right. Are you using that brand to get noticed? Right. And then when you have something special and you know that you use chanel for it mm -hmm. really try to use dior instead to see if you do like it and if you do then push it and promote it right and they will start noticing you right. they just will right if you push it enough yeah i was pushing maybelline just because i really liked it right and guess who works with maybelline all the time oh my gosh i was with camille yesterday and she was talking we were talking about the uh, loose powders and she was like, Joseph put me on. Like, he was like, like you need real. that. And the like, the fit me loose powders, by the way. People always think that, like, I I really liked Maybelline when I tried it. I got booked on a job. Mm -hmm. I had never tried Maybelline before. And it was a Maybelline job. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, no. Like, I'm not familiar with it. Right. So I went and I bought some stuff. They sent me some stuff. And I was really playing with it on, on my friends. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to get familiar with it. And now, honestly, like, it really is in my kit. The, the Fit Me Foundation. Right. Hashtag Maybelline. Um, Hi. Uh, <laughs> the, the Fit Me Foundation, the loose powders, and it was just because I really started liking it, right? And really using it, not fake using it, not right. like, but oh, like, I'm using Pat McGrath, and then I'm low key saying, right? I'm low key using Pat McGrath, and then I'm saying it's Maybelline. Like, right. no, I'm really using it, and I got familiar with it, and they started putting me to the test, and right, you know, I'm really lucky, right? I love that. Now, I actually want to talk. Um, I know we spoke money briefly and commissions and mm -hmm. stuff, but I think because, you know, I, obviously I love talking to you and I want to ask you all the things, yeah. but what do you think, you know, obviously we're talking about agencies and stuff, but I do think that also as you're growing in your career and now with inflation and stuff, like yeah. when it comes to rates, yeah. how should artists be looking at their rates each year? Especially because it's like, okay, I've done, maybe I did the plan that you said, right? I did six months of bridal. I've gotten be as better as an artist. My kit has grown. Now I have some Tom Ford, you know, I have some Maybelline, I have some Chanel. Like my kit is also evolving mm -hmm, with me. Mm -hmm. Like how should I be? Obviously, you know, rates are always a, a, diff a thing, you mm -hmm. know? Obviously, it's based on where you live and, you know, you know, all these different things. But how should I be looking at my rate each year and how do I communicate that to clients? Like, if this person has been booking me for two fifty and then five hundred for a full day, and now all of a sudden I'm like, my rate is one k. Like, how do I, how do I communicate that? You know, I feel like when you are ready to get a raise and a promotion, you have to understand that you are your own boss, mm -hmm. and you are gonna lose some people, mm -hmm. but you are gonna find some other ones. So it's more so a part of your evolution mm -hmm. that you start scouting out different clients that are going to do that because you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Right. I have had many clients that would pay me back, back in the day, seven fifty, And, you know, I worked with them for X amount of time and I'm like, it's $2,000. And they're like, well, how are you going from seven fifty to 2000? And I said, because I am, <laughs> I don't have to justify I said it. what I said. I said what I said when I said But I don't have to justify my right, rates. Like, right. This isn't retail. Right. This is an artist. Right. This isn't, I understand the standard. Right. And, and you were already paying me below standard. Right. So now I have to go back to where I know that I am. Right. And you will get there. And let's say that the $1,000 clients aren't getting you. You'd be like, all right, so if we were at 500, let me at least get to eight. Right. Don't even do 750, stay higher. And right. when they come to you with 750, then you could be like, all right, it's fine. Right. I feel good about it. Right. But it's not 250. Right. Yeah. The I guess the the main thing that I try to push for everyone and I like to give everybody knowledge is that no one taught me anything. I learned all this by myself and I don't know why everything is such a secret. Right. It's I don't know who this is a secret from. Right. I don't know why we're hiding it. Right. But like bitch, I want you to get paid. I want to right. get paid, but I need because to know what Because we literally your... cannot do every single job that's happening. We cannot. Yeah. That's why I put up people to get to for good stuff, but it's yeah. just like you want money too. Right. But also, you have to know your worth and feel it. And right. and when you're ready for that raise, as long as you're not delusional, then you will get it. But know that your hard work and your evolution also is just really part of that type of rate. Right. It's not like, oh, I'm using all Chanel, so now my shit's 2000 That That's not how yeah. that flows. It's yeah. like, how, how quickly can you do work? It's also like, the more you grow into this industry, mm -hmm. you know, before I used to work with all of the magazines. Mm-hmm. 
I was doing like covers of Marie Claire, Harper's Bazaar, mm -hmm. yada, yada, whatever. And now that's not what I want to do. Right. It just changed. Right. And it, I evolved. I love it still, but it's just, it doesn't make me money. Right. And I like to travel. Bitch, I like to go to Greece. I like to go. You see go, the bling on the neck, though? Uh, you know, I have very expensive. <laughs> I was going to wear my diamond necklace. I didn't. But, <laughs> you know, I, I, I like nice things. And right. now that I am in a place in my life where I also don't want to work as hard. Right. I'm 40. Right. Like, no. Right. I can't. So does that also, you know, come into play where you switch agencies because what you want changes? 100%. Yeah. 100%. Also, you shouldn't be ashamed or, or feel some type of embarrassment of going to a lower agency or a entry level agency because the truth is you don't know what you don't know and you have to learn, grow, and evolve. Mm -hmm. And no one is paying your bills, bitch, but you. So who cares that you're at this one random agency right nobody cares right but you your ego your identity and whatever you're trying to think about yourself right but take the chance and learn right fucking try with everything yeah with whatever you're doing just try try right. really hard right. try all the time try with all your might so you don't you never really um regret the things that you you're you're if you go for it right you'll know that you at least failed Right. Or or you did it. Right. But being the what if. Right. No. So how do you navigate, you know, uh, agent artist relationship? So when you do have a successful, um, like you do have success, because I think we all know it's not just about getting signed, magically get jobs. Boom, I'm a celebrity makeup artist. Boom, I'm like, you know, what do you think are some good practices that will that will create a, a successful relationship between agent and artist. Do you think like, oh, you should be setting up quarterly meetings or you should be like, what do you think an artist should be doing? I think in general, communication is really important. Mm -hmm. Also, if you have um, an idea in your head, like, oh God, it's because I showed up late to this, this thing and I think my agent's mad at me because whatever. Right. That happened to me. Um, it was in my head. Mm -hmm. And I came forth with it. And I was like, hey, listen, I just wanted to tell you I was 30 minutes late for whatever, whatever. And, you know, they were like, oh, yeah, I understand. And, you know, traffic. And I made it up in my head, the narrative. So being able to communicate with people mm -hmm. is just so important. So right. if you have something on your mind, ask the agent. But know that when you're dealing with an agent, that the question better be very um, Succinct. well thought out. Mm -hmm. And with no emotion behind it, mm -hmm. because they have to deal with how many other people right. that are like that. Right. So for me, my questions aren't, "Hey, how are you? How's today?" That's I don't I don't care. I don't need to know any of that. It's like, is this appointment at nine or ten? Right. Uh, because I don't need small talk. I just need the answer. My agent right. is my partner, so. Right. I already know you, boo. Right. I don't need this small chit chat. Besties. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like that. So just communicate. Just communicate with people in general, you know, but also definitely your agent because your agent handles your money. Right. So that's, that's your life. That's vulnerable. Yeah. You're vulnerable there. Yeah. So don't be afraid to, to ask the questions. Right. So what do you think are some things you wish you knew before signing to an agent? That your agent is not your boss. Your agent is not your boss. That is, that is the number one right. thing ever in the world that I wish I knew. Right. Because I think I would have been in a different place had I thought that had I known that before. Right. And I already think I'm doing amazing. However, I think knowing that information now keeps me solid and grounded as well. Right. I love that. Because any other question that goes with that is just right. your agent not is not your boss. boss. <laughs> That's just all. I'm it's me and you boo together. I'm not to ask you right. anything. What are you gonna do? Fucking fire me? Right. Right. Then give me back my money. Right. <laughs> Bye. Right. Right. Now, I have a question. Yeah. What do you think determines your career trajectory and your happiness? Because Joseph now has, mm -hmm. you know, your sculpting business. Yeah, I'm a facial sculptor. And, you know, I started doing more content. I have my podcast. We're here. Um, you know, in the studio. And, you know, I used to think, I used to think there was one path, right? And, you know, when I came to New York, I put down my YouTube, I put down everything. I was like, I'm going to just be a makeup artist. This is, you know, and obviously we're multifaceted, but I was just like one-minded. I was like, I'm going to, I want to do this. You know, I want to be fashion. I want whatever. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Like, what do you think really determines your career trajectory and your happiness? Because I think sometimes we're 
afraid to deviate from this quote unquote path, this fake path in our minds? I feel like, you know, what determines your trajectory are essentially the obstacles in front of you. Mm -hmm. Because let's say that I'm like, oh, I want to work with only celebrities, but all of this stuff is in the way, mm -hmm. right? Well, then that is the other path. Right. And you have to hone in on it and do that for a while and then try it again. And then you will be happy because I feel like we, it is the work that essentially makes us happy, right? Right. So if you're doing things you work on, you start evolving. Right. As a person. Right. You started, you, you were doing it, you were doing the, the makeup that you wanted, and then you started evolving. Right. That's it. So if you told yourself all you wanted to do was be that amazing makeup artist, and then guess what? You did it. Right. And now what? Right. So that's why it's just the evolving is, is, is where you essentially end up. Right. Having a goal is good, but like I, will, I can use it in this term because everyone does this shit. Let's say that you're on a diet and you want to weigh 200 pounds or you want to weigh 120 mm -hmm. and you put that number there. And once you get there, you were so happy and working hard to get there and you are excited about it. And once you're there, you're like, oh, now let me go back to whatever I was doing because right. I'm comfortable doing that again. Right. And so I feel like if you set a goal, you're going to be stuck there. Right. And so if you just keep pushing more, you just keep evolving. Right. So your happiness and your trajectory is just your evolution. Right. Because I, I came from a Mac counter, mm -hmm. moved to New York, mm -hmm. worked at Chanel, at Henry Bendel for a couple of years, then started selling candles when I was a high fashion makeup artist. Really? At Henry Bendel. I did not I know sold that. candles. I sold candles at a retail store. And I was working with Herrera, Zach Posen, making crazy money back in 2010. Wow. I was getting like seven Gs a day. Seven Gs a day. 3500 for makeup, 3500 for hair. It was nuts. And then my boss at Chanel, um, when I was at Henry Bendel and Slash Candles, um, she was like a beauty manager. Mm -hmm. She was just like, you have the talent. You should really yeah. call out of work today yeah and ultimately until like i didn't end up getting fired i ended up just like i think it ended up closing or something right. like that uh the store and then i really just jumped in so it was just also like i just wanted to be a makeup artist in new york right i wasn't like oh i want to travel the world with oprah and work with her right i never thought that right and then i did amazing and it was just because like i want to keep going there you know like i want to keep evolving i want to I did have a goal to work with high fashion. And then once I was there and the money started changing and getting less, there's no money in fashion, guys. Don't do it. <laughs> it started being less. It, is, it was true. just, this is um, you know, I started evolving. And then I was like, okay, cool. I can make a little bit of money, but I could also um, work with magazines. Right. And I could also do this and that. And then I was getting more street cred. Right. And that validated me right. mentally within myself. Right. And I was like, wow, look at me. Right. And then I started contributing to Vogue Mexico and all these other magazines. And it was amazing. Right. And then COVID hit. And that's when I was like, fuck, man, I literally lived the time of my life. I did everything I think that I wanted to. And I did everything beyond. And now I have decided that I want to evolve. I still do makeup all the time. Mm -hmm. But I wanted something different. Right. Something fulfilling for me. Right. Because I changed. Right. And I didn't know during COVID that I didn't have any habits. Explain. I was only doing makeup right. for was 22 it. years. Right. That's it. Just makeup. Just makeup all the time. What are you doing makeup? I'm with my friends. We're talking about makeup. I hang out with my friend Britt. She's a hairstylist. We talk about makeup and hair. Right. Like, that's all we do. Right. And I was just kind of like, I need something different, man. Right. And so I started sculpting. And I don't talk about work anymore. I mean, look, as I'm talking about it now. <laughs> but I just, I don't I'm really. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, but what I do is I really talk about people. Right. I want to help people to get information out there because I want people to know that you're worth it. Yeah. You just got to work hard. Can you break down some of the sculpting for us? Like what you, what exactly it is and how you do it? Because, I mean, he transformed my face. Oh, my God. Transform. Um, I still need to come. Like, you, what's goody? You have to. <laughs> you have to. Well, we'll do a video. Oh, my God. Yeah, let's do it. We'll do a video. Yeah. It'll be fun. Um, basically, it is, um, I do like cupping, 40 minutes, facial sculpting and 20 minutes 
intraoral. So I stick my fingers in your mouth mm -hmm. and I massage it out mm -hmm. to get the fluid and to get your muscles working. So it's basically like face gym, mm -hmm. but more intense. Right. But it doesn't hurt. It right. just feels like someone's massaging your face. Right. Which we all need. Because I we, feel like we're no, always but, but, the one to be like yeah, trying to make our what? clients but, feel so nice. But also, you know, that's exactly why currently it's a, like a private wait list. I only want to do people in the industry just because I feel like we deserve it. Right. I feel like we deserve it. Yes. And also when I decide to retire and you become this huge celebrity makeup artist, I'm going to be like, Jaleesa, send your clients over here, bitch. Right. Like, I'm not going to do their makeup. I'll massage them. Right. That's what's up. I don't right. want to leave my house. Right. I just want to make my money and be and spiritual chill. and chill and hang yeah. out. Yeah. I, I, I love that because I'm like, now I have, taken my wellness routine to a whole different yeah. level i do acupuncture cupping cool. yeah me it's too just like isn't it so mm -hmm. amazing i subscribe it within you know what that is oh my god i have they're on my list mm -hmm. but i go to someone on 19th and 5th mm -hmm. um i love him he's mm -hmm. really good like yeah. but they're on my list yeah and i have a bunch of other places i want to try like yeah. the, the more the nomadic like um nomatech like yeah. You know the thing, mm -hmm. the compression. Yeah, on the legs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Some models that. I know I do that. Yeah, like, I'm excited. It's exciting because yeah. you're taking care of yourself and you're, like, seeing yourself in a whole different light. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you know, I want to say, because I just told my friend this, um, I had a call time at, we had a call time at 6 in the morning. And my friend decided to go however they wanted to look mm -hmm. for this celebrity call time. And I woke up at 445 to get ready and look the part. Mm-hmm. And I was getting compliments in the morning of us being there at six of just how amazing I looked. And then when the celebrity left, I looked just as amazing as a celebrity. Know that when you're getting people ready, that you should look ready too. Don't be, I you know, just people talked be, to Camille about this yesterday. real chill at work. Bitch, I show up with diamonds, boots. Uh, this is because this is, I you're am that. Apart. Yeah. I am the celebrity makeup artist in this case. Right. I'm the working makeup artist. And you know what? I'm here. You're my aesthetic and my taste right. is to help you look better. So how am I going to be in my sweatshirt and my sweats? Raggedy. And raggedy and all, dusty. you know, yesterday's dusty and crusty eyes. <laughs> like, we're not doing that. You got to. And also, if I'm sitting down looking at you and you look busted like, like I, I mean you. right and i mean i get it not all the time you're gonna have yeah. time to be like right. the glam but like we know how to do a five minute face you and you know what you, you know should. how to do it and if you're like your hair is all scrap you know what put some hairspray on that shit and make it tight right make it fresh and presentable right i see so many people show up on set and i'm just like you know that the team the, right. the team is here right and they see you. Right. You're not like invisible. Can I tell you this? So I have now this obsession with my nails. Mm -hmm. And before I was never really into my nails. Mm -hmm. But then when, you know, I'm doing all these uh, edit like editorials, they start doing BTS. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, a camera. And I'm like, wait, this camera is like on my yeah. shoulder. And I'm trying to like hide my nails yeah. because I didn't do my. And I was like, girl. It what is happening? Like, you cannot have these dusty hands no. in front of people's faces. And like, it's just that... Ashy. Yeah, it's no, like, it could be moisturized, but if their nails are looking raggedy, it's like, come on. So now no, I'm like obsessed like right with here, it. It's yep. around there that you're yep. ashy. Yes, your hands are ashy, but around there, it gets like yeah. dry. You have to take care. I take so care of I my... So now I like love my nails. I did do this myself. Yeah, it looks great. <laughs> Thanks. And they're actually a week and a half old. I'm going to redo them oh, when I wow. get home. Yeah. Um, okay. Are they gel? No, these are press-ons. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Thank you. Because they're press-ons. Yeah. And and you did it. Yeah. Like, you don't have to go spend crazy money out exactly. there. and Just have a little bit of effort in yourself. Right. Also, another thing that's like, put in some effort in yourself. If you are representing yourself, know that people... If I show up and I'm like, oh, whoa, I'm like this crazy like health guy and blah, 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 and I do all this, and then like, and I look like this, right. you know, when the trainers are like bigger than the person, I'm always right. just kind of like... Right. I don't know. Right. I know you know how to do it, but it doesn't look like you put in the effort. Right. So if be a you, reflection if you of what you want. Abs. Right. So basically, like, be a reflection of what you want. If you 100%. want celebrity clients and you want to, like, you know, you just have to put your like. I did the. Did you do the? Um. Did you do the kid stuff with? Uh. You didn't do the kid stuff with Grishon. No, I oh. need to. I was booked. Oh. I was in L.A. Oh, okay. And she was here. Yeah, but she's uh, gonna be back in yeah, June, yeah, yeah. I think. But like that. I was invited to do that it. alone. Change your life. I believe it. Oh my god. I believe it. Yeah. I need it. I it need changes that. Changes your whole workflow. Yes. 
I, but I believe it so much. And that's just the thing, like putting that effort. It's right. like put an effort in your clothes. I'm not saying go to Bergdorf's. Put an effort in everything that you do and you will know that you will start being happy and you are going to give that off as well. And right. that is part of your own evolution. Right. You know, wanting to look good and people seeing you and you're now getting different type of clientele because this girl looks ready all the time, right. you know, and just like, oh, yeah, oh, she's so pretty. She's so pretty. Right. And what, you might get hired just because you're pretty right. and you're talented. So right. that's the first thing that also gets you in the door. First impressions. First always. Impressions. If you see, you know, when I showed up to Uma Thurman and I was there at Herrera and I was looking at her and I was dressed. Right. I wasn't like in my T-shirt and, you know, like if we're shooting some editorial on the streets, I wasn't right. dressed like that. Right. I was dressed up because I was just kind of like, this person's going to see me. Right. And if I'm in a sweater and some tennis shoes, she's going to be like, does he, where did you find him at right. CVS? <laughs> you know what I mean? He's a CVS beauty guy. <laughs> like, we got a professional. So. I'm sorry, that was so funny. It's true, though. <laughs> oh, my God, you're so funny. So, you know, to close out, I would love to know, like, what advice would you give? I mean, you've given so much advice, but, like, what closing remarks you would give to anyone that's just like, you know what, I want to grow my career, but, you know, like like you said, things take time. Yeah. And I think also what I love that you said, the six months, doing that six months, because sometimes you're like, no, I want it all. I want to do editorial, celebrity, this all at the same time because you think you're running out of time, you think you're running out of whatever you, whatever is in your brain that you feel like is happening. So what are closing remarks would you give to artists that are just like, just trying to figure shit out, like honestly? Okay. I would say fucking try, 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 try. Know that whatever, I guess I'll, I'll tell myself this, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever I do and whatever my trajectory is, is is solely the way that I'm making it. It is not my agent to blame. It is not. Yeah, there are factors like let's say my agent fucked up a job or something. Mm -hmm. Right. Then that's different. But like in my trajectory or when I'm trying to get bigger, it's like the only person to blame is yourself. But the only person to pat yourself on your back is yourself. Right. So know that it is you that is going to truly make the effort. If you do the blame game, like I know a few people who who have been assisting for a very long time and they just can't get ahead. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is I feel like they blame everybody else but themselves and they are not looking in to see why they aren't growing. Right. And they're just stuck because they're stuck in their ways. Right. And they always will be. Well, do you think there's a time where they, they have to consciously decide to stop assisting or is it that they're... 100%. However, with that same mindset that you have to stop assisting, you have to stop assisting. Right. You gotta actually. But people, do it. but people, they're, you're scared. Right. Because of the money. Right. And I understand, but then you'll then prioritize like, oh God, this 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 job's five hundred and my job is only five hundred, so I think I'm gonna do or this one's six fifty, but my job's only five hundred. Five hundred. Like I'm just gonna go assist for six fifty. No, because you can never use that work. Right. You cannot. Also, another thing, if you have some money, income tax, whatever, whatever money you have, and you're serious about becoming an artist, find a photographer and give them money. Right. People are like, oh, well, it's because my book is just whack and whatever. And you shouldn't pay to test. I've paid to test before. I've paid, paid a photographer. I paid to test. I have gone to influencers. Like, I went to a Renny Vasquez. You know Renny Vasquez? Yeah. He's like of an influencer. Course. I've gone to a Renny Vasquez makeup class. I want to know what other people are doing. I'm curious about everybody. Yeah. Because I want to grow, too. I don't, I don't have the mentality of, like, you know, I'm the only makeup artist and it's my way and, like, look at me. I'm amazing. I was like... Damn, bitch, you do some good makeup. Or right. Rennie did that brow like, I've never seen a brow like that. Right. Or just whatever it is. Right. Keep growing. If, if you stop and you're stuck and you're just kind of like, I'm it. Right. Bitch, you're not. Right. You're not it. That's not the T. You need to keep going. You need to continue. You need to invest in your... Fucking try. Yeah. Try. Get those $1,000. Get a hairstylist. Get that model. Get two images. What do you need 15 for? Right. You need two. Right. Like a funny one or like a happy one and then like a serious one right. or one side and another look. Right. You can't use the same look a hundred times. Right. Don't waste your time on that. Yeah. That's really good advice. Invest in yourself. Yeah. And what would you say? Like, um, I know we're like closing remarks, but. But. Um, we're back, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you talk about um, 
you know, investing in yourself and stuff. Like, obviously, I know we've spoken about this personally, but what would be like some good advice you think for artists and like managing their finances? Like, I know that's a whole other conversation, but just generally like managing their finance because we are freelancers. Mm -hmm. We are working for ourselves. We have to invest in all these things and then also like live, yeah. you know, and it's not always easy because we don't know sometimes how soon or not soon we're going to get paid. You know, when I, okay, I'll talk about me. So maybe it'll inspire. When I had first um, really taken into wanting to be a makeup artist, I had saved some money to be able to, to take a chance. And what I did is I didn't go out. I'm like, all right, I spend $75 or $100 every time I go out. Mm -hmm. And I didn't go out for a year. And then I had money. And then I was just kind of like, okay, I see what this money looks like, right? Mm -hmm. What can I do with it? And is it like get a kit? Is it pay for a paid test? Is it? But now I knew I had money because I was really nervous and scared to really uh, to really try to be a makeup artist. Mm -hmm. And... I put my money where, where I wanted it to go, mm -hmm. you know, into, into myself. Mm -hmm. And you have to save for a rainy day, especially as a freelancer. Mm -hmm. You have to save three months rent because you never know right. when you're working again. And that's just kind of like a save rule, right? right. People always say three months rent and yada, yada. Right. But it, it is just one of you those things that like, habit. because if you are a freelancer, bitch, no one is going to give you more money. Right. Unless you turn tricks, but you know what I mean? <laughs> But that's, you, but that's not, another that's thing. Above me now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Don't you but, do, boo. <laughs> but, but, you know, you just, the thing is, is you do have to be wise because it, this is a wild ride. Right. You know, it's, it's a lot of highs and lows. It just is because you could be working with, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, one time I was working with this celebrity and I was so excited to work with them. And I don't know what happened from when I worked with them and then I saw them on the carpet, but something went down. Someone added all sorts of concealer. I would say it was the person. And I really thought, and it looked crazy. And I thought that my career was over. But it was just in my head. And it was something that they did. And it is something that they like to look like. Mm -hmm. And so I was in my head and I realized that it wasn't me. And I would move on to another person. So it's did you work with them I, again? No. No. I. They wanted to. I said no. I fire a lot that's, of clients. That's, I love that. I'm a client firer. Right? Mm -mm. Because if we don't get along, I'm aware. If you like my makeup, I get it. But if our personalities clash. And if you you're going to add creamy, crusty concealer on my work, that's also no point. That's out. not good for me. You yeah. know, it makes me nervous. It made, People know that I did it. And now I can't use it and tag it. And right. You know what I mean? And that's essentially what, what we need. We, we need little billboards. Right. To showcase our stuff. Right. So... You're the uh, best. Thanks, man. I hope that this helps anyone, everyone. If you guys have questions, ask. Absolutely. Oh, so now that we have gotten all the info, can you tell us yeah. how to find you on social? Like how to support you, you know? We um, can book you. They, clearly you can't book him right now, but you can go like the um the page and all the things. Yeah. So please share. Um, <laughs> uh, so my Instagram is at Joseph. Carrillo, that's J-O-S-E-P-H-C-A-R-R-I-L-L-O. Um, that's my Instagram. And then my Sculpted is Sculpted by Joseph. And you'll get to see like some fun massages. And, and before and afters. And before and afters. Yeah, are just so good. I need to like go get one done. Oh my God. I go to someone too. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm going to, I need that. Oh my God. No, it's going to be so good. And then you know what? You can, your before and afters, you're just going to be shook. It's going to be fun. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. You're the best. I appreciate you. Absolutely. It's fun. Oh, my gosh. Thank you.